Jake Ludington here at HPE Discover in London, and I'm here with Chris Wellis. And you do a lot of work in sustainability inside HP, and you guys recently published a study on total cost of ownership that's kind of looking at it in a completely different way. Could you talk about that? Sure. The study was actually published by CDP, formerly known as the Carbon Disclosure Project. And what they found in CDP is, in addition to being the global platform for carbon disclosure for both municipalities and companies, they also analyze behavioral patterns. And what they noticed is so this shift, this growing trend over time, where companies, when they're making their purchasing decisions, are actually beginning to look at sustainability elements of the products and services that they're purchasing. And, and so when they, you say that they, they started noticing this, what, um, what sort of actionable data are they gathering around that? Yeah, so CDP actually collects a host of data, including behavioral uh, shifts, opportunities, risks associated with how a company operates and its strategy around carbon. And that was one of the growing trends identified. So what other evidence is there out in the, out in the wider world that, that demonstrates that these are being factored into purchase decisions in, in I mean, sustainability as opposed to just you know, how much does it cost? Yeah, so interestingly enough, probably one of the most forward-leaning organizations right now is the Department of Defense. Uh, the, the DOD purchases billions of dollars of products every year. They've actually published a guidance around procurement strategies which incorporates not only financial costs but also environmental costs of the products that they're, that they're purchasing. Um, for instance, when you or I buy a cell phone, about 80% of the energy associated with that cell phone is what we call embedded energy. It's related to the manufacturing of the product itself. Only about 20% is related to the energy during the use phase. Now when you purchase something like a server, that flips, flips on its head. About 20% is embedded energy, where 80%, because they use so much more energy, are, are associated with the use phase of that particular product. Wow, that's a, that's a big, big difference. It's a, it's a shift. A general rule is the smaller the product, the more embedded energy. That doesn't always apply, but in IT, that's usually a good rule of thumb. So what we did, actually with CDP as a third, party, third independent party doing the analysis, is we actually looked at our Moonshot server, which is an extreme low energy server, and we wanted to understand what the potential broader effects would be of the adoption of this type of technology. If organizations began to look at their purchasing of servers through this lens that the DOD uses and really factor in what the true cost of ownership is in financial terms, not just CapEx and OpEx, but the actual environmental cost expressed in, in financial terms. What they did is they compared analyst estimates of the insertion rate of extreme low energy servers and factored moonshot uptake to replace traditional servers of a similar class. What they found was that if we were to achieve just the average estimate of what analysts believe could be the adoption rate, that it would be the equivalent of taking about six million cars off the road annually. If the aspirational analyst numbers were obtained, it would be more like taking 20 million, the equivalent of that's 20 million cars off the road. That's a, that's a big number in, in terms of consumption. It is, and it's just actually the carbon that's being looked at there. So what this DOD guidance does is it factors in about 1,500 factors, not just carbon, associated with environmental costs. These are things like impact to soil, impact to land, impact to waterways, noise. It factors all of them through sort of the input-output analysis. Wow, so they're factoring in, in like, uh, sort of like the uh, birth to dust of, of everything. It, exactly, it's a real total life cycle analysis. And I mean, LCAs are pretty common in the product, especially in the IT and electronics space, but this is a new way of taking those environmental impacts and actually applying financial terms to those impacts so that customers understand that when they purchase a product, not only is there a, a traditional financial cost associated with those products, but a financial cost. And as suppliers, one of the things that we've recognized is when we sell a customer a product, we don't just make a fee on that. We're actually transferring environmental cost yeah. associated with that particular product. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can through our innovations to keep that as low as possible. Very cool.
Thanks, Chris. You got it.